Acts chapter 13, if you found that, and out of respect to the Word of God, if you'll stand, we're going to read a couple verses. Keep your Bible open. We're going, to, we're going several places tonight, and I may just get started. Amen? Preacher said I had till 10 o'clock, so I said, it'd be all right. I got to preach last night and tonight. No, not really. Amen. He says in verse number one, now there were in the church that was at Antioch, and can I just say something right there? If I stop every time, but I'm going to say this, God has chosen one institution, if you want to call that, one thing in this world to reach the world with the gospel, and it's called His church. Amen. He did not establish some denomination, some fellowship, some organization. He established His church. And when he goes looking for people to do the work, he goes where he knows he can find them. That's why some people aren't here tonight. Because they, they know if they get around it enough, God might just ask them to do something. Smile, amen. You say, well, you're not supposed to say that. I ain't got to preaching yet, Amen. I'm going to tell you, why is it missions conferences is the worst attended services in most churches? I'll tell you why. Because people are, well, anyhow, I'll get to read him. <laughs> they know what could happen. It's not about your money. God is not a debtor to any person. He's not broke. He's not even in a bad economy in heaven. He doesn't need your money. He wants you. He said there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon is called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Mayan which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. I want you to underline that phrase. They sent away them away. That is the key to missions. Amen. The sending of God's servants around the world is the key to missions. And we're going to look at several things about that over the next few nights. But let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Thank you for this dear church, the many friends we have in this room. And Lord, we thank you for this dear pastor and his wife and their children, and they are our friends. We cherish that friendship and fellowship every time we can have it. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege it is to just be able to stand behind your pulpit and preach your word one more time. And Lord, we ask tonight not just for the, the spiritual strength and the power, but Lord, for the physical strength that we need tonight to do what you want to do. Now, Lord, just bless. We yield ourselves to you as the best we know how. And God, whatever's accomplished tonight, we'll be careful to give you the glory for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Now, hey, hey folks, can, can I say to you tonight that the, 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 there's a problem in America in our churches, and it's not sin. It's selfishness. You say, what do you mean? We want to keep everybody. And God did not intend for this church to keep everybody. God intended for this church to see people saved, see people's lives discipled and, and people's lives challenged and get people's lives in a place where God can send them wherever he wants them to go. Amen. Now, now take your Bibles. This sending did not start in the book of Acts. I want you to go back to the book of Isaiah. And, and Brother Medeiros, you've heard part of this, but you ain't heard it all. Amen. So just hang in there. Amen. He was in a meeting with us a while back and I, I used to try to remember what I preached, but I figured they needed it anyhow. Amen. <laughs> Go to Isaiah chapter number 6, and I want you to see something. This thing about sending, uh, God intends and he wants to even this week to reach in this congregation and, and, and take somebody and send them where he wants them to be. But the first step in that takes surrender. You say, preacher, what is faith promise giving do? It, it teaches me to surrender my money. Because it's teaching you how to surrender a whole lot more than your money. Because see, 
most people, their money is their God. You say, well, I'm saved. It's not true. But then, then why do you work overtime and don't come to church? Why do you buy things you can't pay for and don't come to church? Why do you argue with God about giving the missions when it's what you're supposed to do? Because this is your God. Amen. Smile. It'll be all right, amen. And see, God said, if you can surrender this, you're on the pathway of surrendering your heart, surrendering your life. Hey, mom and dad, surrendering your kids. Hey, I want you to notice what happens here in the book of Isaiah. Hey, you know the story in Isaiah chapter 6. Uh, he said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord also sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Now, you could preach for the next hour out of these next few verses, but I, I want you to go down and, and, and look at verse 5. He said, then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Now, the next verse is very key. He said, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? See, Isaiah, God did not speak to Isaiah directly. I believe God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit were having a conversation on the throne. And Isaiah had just saw a vision of that throne and realized how unclean and how ungodly he was and fell on his face and asked God to clean his heart. And then he heard God say, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And look what he said. And then said, I, here am I. Send me. You say, preacher, what are you trying to say? Hey, folks, when we finally get to the place, we surrender everything to God. Then we will hear a voice of God saying, who shall we send? Who will go for us? We need a church in Hawaii. Who will go? We need churches in Japan. Who will go? You say, well, these people had this this life-altering experience with God. No, they just surrendered their life and got rid of all the sin, and they heard God say. You say, I'd never hear that. might be that you've never surrendered your life and got rid of the sin. If you ever get your ears cleaned out, you'd hear God say something. But your ears are so full of the world and the world's music and the junk of the world and everything else and you're more surrendered to your hobbies than you are surrendered to God. I got up this morning at 5 o'clock, took my shower with the unscented soap, put on all my camouflage stuff, Wandered down th- through the dark in the woods, climbed up in the tree stand, and as I sat down, God said to me, Now, when deer hunting's over, are you still going to get up at five o'clock? Or are you more surrendered to this than you are to me? Tomorrow night, there'll be people that aren't here. Because Jeanette's football team is more important than God. There's people who won't come back Sunday night because the Steelers are playing. Well, the way they're playing this year, you'd be better off coming to church. Well, the World Series is on. Who cares? That's why they call it DVR. Hit the button. Go do something for God. Preacher, what's this got to do with the missions? We're more surrendered to everything in the world than we are to God. And God comes by and says, I need somebody to go to Ireland. I need somebody to go to, to Zambia. I need somebody. Who will go? And we never hear the voice of God. Because we're more surrendered to our 
thinking in our life, well, somebody hurt my feelings. Well, grow up, big boy. My mother-in-law hurts my feelings every day, and I just still love her anyhow. <laughs> grow up. Well, I didn't like what the preacher said. Grow up. Did you turn the football game off because you didn't like what the commentator said? Got a bunch of mamby, pamby, bait. I'm just in a weird mood tonight, brother. You better pray I get out of it, amen. What a bunch of mamby, pamby Christians. Hey, you, the kids go off. Junior wants to play football and ain't nothing wrong with that. And sissy wants to twirl and everybody wants to do this. And we run helter and skelter and we buy two vehicles. And we, we're so submitted to their kids doing what they want to do. Why don't you teach your kids to be submitted to God and bring them to church and let them hear the voice of God. Do something for Jesus Christ. Amen. Surrender. To what God wants. Amen. Well, I don't want, I want, I, who cares what you want? God doesn't care. Brother Six said, man, I never heard this guy preaching. He's done look crazy tonight, amen. That's all right, brother. That's all I know to do. The world is dying and going to hell, brother June. We can't even surrender five minutes of our time to pray. You know what's sad? You said to them kids, Name 35 missionaries in what country? I wonder if their parents could name 35 missionaries in what country they went to. But you know who hit the, who has the best batting average on the Cleveland Indians? The Chicago Cubs. Probably more people know the Chicago Cubs haven't been in the World Series for so long than the fact that Jesus Christ died for a world and that every second four people die and, or, or two people die and go out into eternity without Jesus Christ and every second every four people born into this world and the world needs to hear uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ and we need to hear the voice of God and it takes surrender. Yes, sir. Amen. Hear my. Sin, Pastor Ross. Here am I. Sin, Roger Knapper. Right. That's right. I didn't want Isaiah said. Right. Here am I, Lord. Sin me. Amen. We pulled out of the house today to head up here. A little 13 year old red headed granddaughter of mine put her arm around me. They'd, they came in for the funeral. She said, Wish you didn't have to go. Now, I love y'all, but that just about made me stay home. <laughs> I took my little grandson to town today to buy corn for the deer feeder, and he, he, he was talking about how he wanted something else to eat at breakfast, and, and we got to town. I said, you still hungry? Mommy said he couldn't have anything else, but he's with Papa now. Amen. <laughs> I said, hey, you still hungry? He said, yeah. I said, come on. We went in the store. I said, whatever you want, you can have. <laughs> he found this honey bun. Must have been that big around, about that thick. He said, right there. I bought it for him. He got her eight before we got to the house. Amen. <laughs> he wadded that paper up, put it in his pocket. I said, give it to me. I'll get rid of it. Amen. Amen. I love my grandkids. Thank God. They're in Florida and they're in North Carolina and they're in Hampshire. The folks that are getting saved. Last Sunday they had 19 first time visitors at Gulf, Gulf Shores Baptist Church in Dunedin, Florida, and I shouted to victory. I say, why? Here, my Lord, send your kids. No, here, my Lord. Send me. Are you that surrendered? Are you that surrendered? That God could come by this week and say, I want you. I want you to go. But, 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 no, but with God, he said, here am I, send me. He went to the church, said, separate me. Barnabas and Saul, who did he speak to in Acts 13? He spoke to the church and said, separate me, those two servants. I want to send them somewhere. It takes total surrender. 
And we haven't ever got there. Hmm. Go to Matthew chapter number 9. See, here, here's how this thing works. Matthew chapter 9 really sets it out for us, folks. You, you get to Matthew chapter 9. Hey, what made God say that in Isaiah chapter 6? Why did God say that? He said, whom, whom shall I send and who will go for us? I'll tell you what happens. Every time God sees a need, God then wants to send somebody to meet that need. What happens in, in Matthew chapter number 9? He said in verse 36, But when he, that's Jesus, verse 35, When he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And what is he saying to his disciples? Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Hey folks, listen. Jesus is is looking that crowd in the eye and he said I saw the multitude I had compassion on the multitude I saw the need now you pray that I send labors to my harvest yes, Amen. hello yeah. you know what your problem is you're waiting from this earth shattering experience with God to have this overwhelming emotional experience to experience a call of God to some place when you just need to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and let him send you wherever it may. It may just be back to your work to be a better witness or across the street to your neighbor to tell somebody about Jesus Christ or back to your school to tell somebody about the Lord. But it may be to Scandinavia. It may be to Romania. It may be to the other side of the world. But here are my Lord, send me. And then let him do it. Yes. See, that's surrender. That's surrender. Ooh. Are we that surrendered? Now watch what happens in the next chapter. Then he, when he called unto his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And he names them twelve disciples. And he gets down to verse number five. And these twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, now watch this, and commanded them, saying, go not to the way of the Gentiles or into any of the city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but go Rather, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You know what Jesus said right there? I got a specific people that you're to go to. Right. Amen. right there. I've said it here before. I'll say it again. That man has the purest burden for inmates. Anybody ever been around in my life? Amen. Amen. God had a specific people. He didn't send him to Japan. He didn't send him to Romania. He didn't send him to Hawaii. He didn't send him to Scandinavia. He, he had a Pacific people. And when God has a compassionate desire to reach a people, he comes to his house and he, puts, he gets a hold of some of his servants and says, I'm going to send you where I want you to go. Yeah. Amen. Huh? That's surrender. Yes. But Lord, I don't want to go to prison. Who cares what you want? It's God's desire to send you where He wants to send you because He saw that need and He had compassion on that people. Hey, listen, every time I see that video of Brother Hiltabrand, uh, Hiltabrand, Hiltabiddle, amen, Hiltabrand's with the Rock of Ages, amen. I, I remember standing in that palace in, in Romania and I remember Mircea taking us around and showing us that palace and he said, Preacher, when they built this palace, he said that that. That, that evil ruler, he hired men to build the first floor, dig the, the, foundation, the basement and the foundation and build the first floor and fired them all. Hired new men to build the second floor and fired them all. And hired new men to build the third floor and fired them all. And nobody knew how to get from one floor to the other but Ceausescu. And when he got up to the big parliament room in the top, he hired these 700, I think it was six or 700 gypsy women to weave a rug in that room to, fight, to fit that room in that room and then took them all outside the city and killed them. It's a wicked, vile man. And he showed me all that. He said, now here's the burden, brother. And we walked at the very front of that building 
and he knelt down and he reached down and pulled the cover off of a manhole cover in the middle of the street and he said, listen. And you could hear the voices of children running through those, that, that huge duct in the street where the water and the heat went through the city of Bucharest. He said there's hundreds and thousands of homeless children that live down there. Hear my Lord, send me. And God saw that and he said, Aaron Hiltabittle, go. Yes. Poor got quiet, didn't he? See, you're not surrendered to that. Because if you had surrendered to that, given this is no problem. Given this is not a big deal. Why? Because you're surrendered. Amen. And watch this. And I'm going to go back and he has a specific people he's going to send you to. But notice something. And this is where it gets to be fun. So if you don't love me now, you're not going to like it after you. He says to them in verse 7, Now you go, as you go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is hand and we won't deal with aught, you know that. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you receive, freely give. And then he said, provide neither gold or silver nor brass in your purses nor strip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet stays, for the workman is worthy of his meat. Aren't you thank God today for the missionaries, amen? amen. Somebody say amen. 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 They're worthy of their meat. Amen. He said, I, I'm going to send them and I've got a, I got a way I'm going to take care of them. The rest of those people that are surrendered are going to provide their needs. Amen. He says, don't take gold, don't take silver, don't take anything. You just go. And watch what he says. He says in verse number 11, And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till you go thence. And when you come into a house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return unto you. You know what I'm tired of, brother? I am tired of us parading missionaries through our churches to give them the inspection. Right. To see if they're worthy for us. But that verse didn't say that. He didn't say, you parade the missionary through town and see if they're worthy to come to your house. He said, the missionary is going to knock on your door and see if you're worthy to help them. Amen. Whoa. Yeah. Good. Well, that would change your whole thinking when you think about that. Amen. It's not like, well, hey, I, I didn't like the way she dressed. I didn't like the way their kids act. I didn't like, who are you? You take your kids, put them in a van for seven hours and then unlock the door and say, now be perfect little gentlemen for the next two hours. Keep your shirts buttoned and you're tucked in and everything and just look real good because they're inspecting us. Well, that baby cried. Does yours ever cry? And we're trying to, uh, let's, let's see, Brother Roger and Miss Myrna, has he got his tie right? And see, and, 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 and his shoes shine. Let's see, is he worthy for us to support him? Really? God said, no, you say, who's worthy? Is this house worthy? Is this church worthy to support the six families? That takes surrender. Yes. That's you surrendering your life. Well, we weren't going to support him. Look at what he drives. Well, what do you drive? I had a pastor got mad at me. He hadn't spoke to me since. After God gave us a van to take our kids in, Brother Hilton Biddle, 
Our kids prayed that van in. You ask them. They were doing schoolwork as, 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 as 16, 13, and 9 years old or in the back of a Chevy Illumina going down the interstate. They said, we need a van. I said, pray for it. I don't have time to tell you the story. God gave us the van for the less payment than what we was paying on the Chevy Illumina. We take it out to the very first meeting. They were so excited. They stuffed Alan in the back, amen. <laughs> they said, get rid of that little boy. You know how it is, older brothers and sisters, amen. And they, we tooled up to that meeting. We, they so excited. They had room to move. Alan laid down on the couch, took a nap. He thought it was great back there. We got there early, laid the seat back in that seat and took a little nap and man it was just wonderful and the pastor pulls up in a brand new Mercury Marquis and he says man I'm going to go to mission work look what missionaries are driving I, I wanted to say I'm going back to pastor and I didn't know pastors drove those things <laughs> and got up that night in church and said you ever want to meet a rich missionary they're just about ready to do it. Had no clue that I had $3 to my name when I pulled on that parking lot. It's not just as the missionary worthy. I'm not going to discount that. We need to send the best, amen? But he said, are we worthy? Do we measure up? Well, we wouldn't support that missionary if he listened to that music. Then why do you? We wouldn't support that missionary because of what he wears. Then why do you? Well, we don't like the way his wife looks. Don't get me started. My wife, please, is, she, the only one that matters what it looks is to me. That's right. It's the dog and pony show, Brother Medeiros, is what I call it. Let's get them up here. Yeah, pick that dumb shit here. <laughs> Look at me. I'm good. My kids can sing. His can't. My, my wife can play the piano. His, who cares? And the missionaries get wrapped up in it. Why? Well, their presentation, I've already do mine. No. Church, are we surrendered to the point that we're worthy to hold the rope for these precious missionaries? Amen. Amen. That's the way we should look at it. Are we worthy? Y'all, y'all need to know Brother Gary Forney. Pastor knows him. I think you probably do. Brother Forney called a church the other day and said, just drop my support. The pastor said, why? He said, I was on your website. I, I listened to the music. I don't want to be identified with that. He said, well, missionary do that? Why not? If the missionary was listening to that music, you'd drop him. See, it's all about our surrender. How surrendered are we? We look at the missionary and say, man, what a family. Surrendered, they're going to go over there, live in those harsh conditions and, and all that stuff in, in Scandinavia. How surrendered are you? What if God came by a young man and said, I want you? What's more important? What God wants or what you want? How many men you know that could be used in the ministry, but their wife wasn't surrendered? That's right. yep. And God wanted to send them, mm -hmm. but she wouldn't. Well, preacher, you just got to understand. No, God said, I don't understand nothing. That's right. 
He said, it's surrendered. Here am I. Send me. It's surrendered. God's got a specific people that he wants to send you to. It's here am I. I'm surrendered. And am I worthy? You know what scares me more than anything else, Brother Owen? It's to get to the place Paul said, I keep under my body. I bring it into subjection. Lest when I've preached the gospel to you, I myself become a castaway. You know what he's saying? He says, I become unworthy for God to use me. See, it's not God using the missionary and not using you. It's God using you to keep the missionary on the field. And so if you're not worthy, he may be worthy. But if you're not worthy, he's not getting there. So it's a matter of surrender. One of my family members said to me yesterday, said, why is it that all your kids are in the ministry? Why is it that all your kids are serving God? I said, because when every one of them was born, we took them to an altar of the church and said, here they are, Lord. You do with them what you want. We'll raise them. They're yours. We're surrendered to you. They're yours. God doesn't mean God's going to put them on the ministry. But he's going to put them on the service of God. And he's going to make them all worthy. But the reason our kids aren't getting this surrender and making themselves worthy is because they're learning how not to surrender by watching mom and dad. Our churches are full of people that one time in an altar said, God, told him to do this and never did it. And they're the most miserable, aggravated church members in the world. And it's not because the church is messed up. It's because you're not surrendered. I did not have to drag my wife out of the house today kicking and dragging and yelling and screaming. In fact, she drove me halfway up here. I'm as right with God as I've ever been. (laughs) Riding with her in a car, amen. She'll tell me, go to sleep, and then, oh, what's that? (laughs) Y'all try to sleep like that? (laughs) What are you doing? She gets mad at me when I yell at drivers, but she doesn't. And I'm trying to rest. I'm supposed to be recuperating to go preach. I love you. You talk to these missionaries' wives. Can you imagine growing up in Ireland? Come here, meet a husband. Now you're going to Japan. Where's all your family, Steve? You're still in Ireland. Hey, get that, Mom. Mm I haven't met him but just a few minutes, but I don't see a rebellious attitude. I don't want to go to Japan. I want to go back to Ireland. I want to go next to live next door to mommy. Y'all better pray. I get some rest tonight. <laughs> this is the way I'm going to be all week. It's going to be fun. I'm just tired of unsurrendered. Unsurrendered. And God sitting on the throne saying, There's 800 tribal languages in New Guinea that don't have one gospel witness. And whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And God's waiting. Here, my Lord, send me. Amen. Justin Levine is in. You hear me talk about him all the time, Kathmandu, Nepal. He had a church split the other day. 
I said, well, yeah. Yeah, because he was preaching in Nepali, translating it into Tibetan, and translating it into the lower language. He said, the time they translated it the third time, we was losing it. So we split the church, and we have three services now. <laughs> one in Nepali, one in Tibetan, and one in lower. And here's what he said to me. Would you pray God would send me somebody to help me? And there's people all over this world. The God of heaven looks down and says, I don't want them to go to hell. Whom shall we send? Who will go for us? He's waiting for teenage boys to say, Who, my Lord? Right. Send me. He's waiting for mom and dads to say, Here, my Lord. Send me. But you've got to surrender to it. Are you surrendered to it? 